Remember last week after Daniel Bryan's Occupy Raw segment, I said I was 10 times more excited for WrestleMania 30? Make that 20 times more excited. There you go, WWE. That's how you fucking do it. What a Raw. What a great show. What a great final segment, more importantly. Good Mike Work's going to go back to his roots and do a little bit of Triple H defending. I haven't done that in a while. You know what? Last night's Raw was nothing without Triple H. He made that show. People have constantly been giving Triple H shit from the minute he started dating Stephanie McMahon. He never wants to put anybody over. He holds people back. He's selfish. He has an ego. All of that stupid fucking nonsense you hear from 18-year-old fans that think they know more than Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and Triple H and they don't even have three hairs on their nuts yet. As a wrestling fan, as a Mark, as a Smark, as a Cena hater, as a Cena lover, whoever you are in the realm of the wrestling population, how in the world could you possibly have anything bad to say about that final segment on Raw? That was fucking gold. That's primarily what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm not going to go through a full-on Raw review. We're just going to talk about the important stuff, and the big stuff that happened on Raw, you know, is with the Daniel Bryan Triple H WrestleMania main event situation. How long has it been since we've gone into a WrestleMania technically not known? what the main event is. That's pretty intriguing, and WrestleMania is looking good, and they did a lot to help build this show on Monday Night's Raw. The Triple H opens up the show by standing in the ring, cutting a promo on what went down last week with the Occupy Raw segment. He said he's had a few weeks to calm down, and he plans on confronting Daniel Bryan tonight in the middle of the ring on Raw, and he's going to get some things off of his chest, as he calls it. Well, in the middle of this promo, out comes Batista. Batista hits the ring and starts freaking out on Triple H. What the hell are you thinking, fucking with my main event? You're putting me in a horrible situation and now I'm possibly going to have to wrestle two guys and I could lose the WWE title by not even getting beat. It's not fair to me. I came back. I won the Royal Rumble. I've earned my shot. What the fuck are you doing? And of course, Triple H looks at Batista like he's crazy saying, hey, you know who you're talking to? I'm Triple H. Daniel Bryan doesn't stand a chance against me. Then out comes Randy Orton and he's equally as pissed as Batista. Now they're both getting on Triple H's case and then finally Triple H fucking snaps. He climbs out to the apron of the ring for some reason on the other side of the ropes and finally just freaks out and cuts a promo on both both of them calling Dave Batista a spoiled Hollywood piece of shit that's coming back, you know, after years off and trying to tell him how to run his business. He then called Randy Orton a fuck up and told him he can't get anything done without his hand being held. I loved it. It was great. The Triple H haters are going to say he buried somebody. Do you really care if Batista and Randy Orton get buried? Come on. And it reminds me of the line in Princess Bride when Indigo goes, that word, I don't think it means what you think it means. I mean, people throw that term buried around so loosely when it comes to Triple H. I don't even think they're analyzing what the fuck that even means. Nobody's being buried here. Not Randy Orton, not Batista, not Daniel Bryan. Nobody. And if you do think that and you're so blinded by your hatred for Triple H that you can't see the good in this segment and how great WrestleMania 30 is shaping up, then I'm pretty sure your parents are brother and sister. But back to the promo, Triple H, as he's screaming at Batista and Randy Orton, decides, you know what? Fuck this shit. And I made reference to this in my last commentary. This is kind of the direction they were going. I said that I wouldn't be surprised at all if Triple H gets so mad you know that he finally inserts himself into this situation and says you know what fuck all this shit that's my belt and I'm gonna take the belt myself and that's kind of exactly what he did he's so sick and tired of his pussy champion and his pussy challenger and this little tiny midget that's trying to challenge for the title he's saying fuck all three of you if I beat Daniel Bryan at Wrestlemania 30 then I am gonna be in the match and it's gonna be a triple threat match regardless of what happens either way Wrestlemania main event will now be a triple threat match possibilities out the ass now so that was the big bombshell that dropped Triple H you know throws the mic down goes back to the ring and everybody's like holy shit and then backstage they show Stephanie giving shit to Triple H such a typical nagging cunt wife god she is so good at playing that role you know if the best wrestling characters are truly the ones where you know people get to be themselves then I can see a lot of Stephanie's real life personality coming out in her character my god she sounds like a pain in the ass I think I could probably tolerate Stephanie if we were both on ecstasy and we were both in the shower together, but other than that, she just sounds fucking wretched. I cannot imagine what it must be like for poor schmucks around the world to have fucking wives like that. Unbelievable. But she's giving them all sorts of shit, you know, what are you doing? You're making the big mistake, and he's trying to tell her, calm down, I got this, you know, everybody's questioning me, who the fuck are you talking to here? I'm Triple H. Daniel Bryan is the size of my fucking leg, okay? I'll have no problem wiping the mat with his ass at WrestleMania 30. And Stephanie continues to be really uneasy about 
about the whole situation, and you can see this tension in, in the authority. Also, by the way, in that opening segment that was involving Evolution, they did announce that Randy Orton was going to get Daniel Bryan in a no-DQ match, and that match was up later on in the show. And once that match started, I was actually a little bit confused because I was assuming that that match would be the main event. Because after what took place last week in the Occupy Raw movement and Triple H getting so pissed off and Daniel Bryan, you know, having his big moment and potentially being added into the WrestleMania main event, you know, Triple H being pissed off all week about it, you have to think and you have to know that Raw is going to go off the air with Daniel Bryan laying in a heap. So I was just assuming that since it was a no DQ match between Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, that Triple H would probably just come out in the end of that match and beat the holy shit out of Daniel Bryan, leaving him laying and allowing Randy Orton to get the pin and the victory against Daniel Bryan in the main event because Randy Orton got pinned by Daniel Bryan last week on Raw. But no, that's not what happened. This no DQ match was in the middle of the card and uh, they teased what could happen at WrestleMania, something I also talked about in my last commentary, is that all it would take you know, for Daniel Bryan to win the title, you know, if he's in the main event, is for Randy Orton and Batista to have some sort of a miscommunication, you know, in a botched spot, and Daniel Bryan can roll in and score the quick three count. So during the match, Batista runs down there, apparently to spear Daniel Bryan, but he misses and spears Randy Orton. Daniel Bryan then slides in the ring and gets the pin on Orton, beating him two weeks in a row, and you're like, holy crap. I'm starting to lose track of how many times Daniel Bryan has actually pinned the WWE champion in non-title scenarios. So that's when it actually dawns on me that the main event is actually going to be the confrontation between Triple H and Daniel Bryan. So since we're on the subject, let's just fast forward right to that final segment. I knew something was up because as soon as Triple H started, you know, not, you know, healing on Daniel Bryan so hard. Yeah, he was pissed off. Yes, he said he was going to end, you know, the yes movement and all of this nonsense. He was going to put a stop to it. He was going to put an end to it. And Daniel Bryan has no chance in hell of winning the WWE title at WrestleMania, much less defeating Triple H as it is. But he was kind of, you know, showing a little bit of respect to Daniel Bryan. I liked you. I don't want to have to do this. All of this crap. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I knew something was up. I knew Daniel Bryan was going to get beat down one way or the other. But I started getting mad when Triple H was not, you know, was not as vicious on Daniel Bryan as I was hoping he would be. So I'm getting a little annoyed at the writing. And I'm like, what are the fucking writers thinking doing this? Triple H should be fucking furious. Why is he acting like he doesn't hate Daniel Bryan. It pisses me off. Then Stephanie comes out there, acting just as cunty as she was earlier on in the show, giving Triple H all sorts of shit, screaming on the mic, you know, you respect him, what are you saying? That's it, I'm taking matters into my own hands. Officers, arrest Daniel Bryan for what he did on Raw last week. It was illegal, I'm pressing charges. And then out come all these fucking fake security guards to handcuff Daniel Bryan. Triple H is pretending like he's pissed off. Stephanie, what are you doing? There's this rift in the marriage, you know, it's a power struggle. They both want different things and they actually spoiled the swerve a little bit before it actually happened because when Triple H is in the aisleway talking to Stephanie you can see the two of them smiling like they're in cahoots so I saw right there I'm like holy shit Triple H is in on this then he gets in the ring and gets on the mic and says, get out of here, guys. You're not even real cops. I'm looking forward to doing this myself. And then kicks and starts beating the crap out of Daniel Bryan. And for a PG show, it was one brutal fucking beatdown. Great camera angles, great work. They made it look really good. And then one good hardcore chair shot to the head against the ring post. Does anybody even know if Daniel Bryan is out of his coma yet? What a beatdown. I think even Daniel Bryan fans love this segment. That was great. For every punch, for every kick, for every slap from Stephanie McMahon, for every chair shot to the head, all that does is build more and more sympathy and momentum for Daniel Bryan. And, you know, it's almost a double-edged sword. You know, all of the people that complained to WWE and how they've pushed guys like John Cena, calling him Superman, he wins at all costs. Well, look at Daniel Bryan. Triple H almost killed him. Raw ended with an attempted murder, and he's 20 days away from WrestleMania, so he's supposed to not only recover from the worst beating of all time, but he's supposed to go in the ring against a guy twice his size and beat him, and then he's supposed to go into the main event against two guys, each one of those guys also twice his size, and beat both of them? I mean, who is really Superman here? You know, you gotta think logically, so, you know, they're really going overboard with it, but hell, it's been six or eight months of this build with Daniel Bryan. We've been waiting a long time since SummerSlam for something big to go down with him, and I love what they're doing. I much prefer Daniel Bryan and Triple H uh, than Triple H and uh, fuck. 
what was that guy's name with the with the Pepsi tattoo? Fuck, I forget his name. But whoever that guy was, I much prefer this scenario with Daniel Bryan and Triple H because this is great. That's the Triple H I wanted to see. That's the type of segment I wanted to see. And this is something I thought they would do for WrestleMania, like I mentioned in my last commentary. You know, what if Daniel Bryan does score some sort of a quick roll-up and three-count and upsets Triple H at WrestleMania? I can easily see Triple H snapping and just beating the hell out of Daniel Bryan and making sure that he won't even be able to compete, you know, in the main event anyway. Well, they kind of pulled that angle on Raw. I mean, Triple H and Stephanie brutalized Daniel Bryan, and they humiliated him. Triple H has now given himself a huge advantage going into WrestleMania 30. And I love it. I love the character. I love how brutal he was. I mean, Triple H, to me, tonight changed, you know, into the cerebral assassin, the cold, calculating, you know, wrestler with no remorse whatsoever for his actions. And who now, because of his position of authority, is using his power to get what he wants. He's basically, you know, booking himself into the main event of WrestleMania 30. He has the ability... I guess to change matches whenever he wants so he says now I'm going to be the one that's going to wrestle in the main event if I beat Daniel Bryan and he just put Daniel Bryan like I said in a fucking coma so now he's basically if you look at the storyline a shoe in you know to go into the main event of Wrestlemania 30 and we should all be talking about Randy Orton versus Batista and Triple H because you have to think storyline wise after what we saw on Raw and what Triple H is capable of there's no way Triple H is just going to get pinned at Wrestlemania and then just sit quietly back and let Daniel Bryan have his moment at WrestleMania. Triple H obviously hates Daniel Bryan. We saw that on Raw after he damn near killed him. So something's got to give here. Daniel Bryan, it looks as if, storyline-wise, is going to be injured going into WrestleMania. So he's already, you know, he's just already at just such a huge disadvantage. And he already had, you know, insurmountable odds to overcome anyway. And I will tell you this. If we do indeed see Daniel Bryan as the WWE Champion at the end of WrestleMania 30, you know, I don't want to hear anybody ever call John Cena Superman again. But I, for one, am really excited about WrestleMania. And I loved the Swerve on Raw. That was a great final segment that was brutal for, you know, the PG era to see something like that every now and then. We got it last year. Remember Triple H and Brock's bloody brawl? So the whole segment was very brutal and very, very well done, and I loved it. And I said last week, I don't know if Triple H and Daniel Bryan will open the show, if it'll be more mid-card, I have no idea. I almost think that the Daniel Bryan-Triple H match at WrestleMania will actually be right before the main event. That's actually what I think they might do. And then if Daniel Bryan does wind up beating Triple H, Daniel Bryan just stays in the ring laying there while security, you know, escorts a pissed off Triple H out from ringside area. And then Batista comes out, and then Randy Orton comes out, then the announcer does his thing, and the match is on. So I think I would like to see it go one of those two ways, either Triple H and Daniel Bryan wrestle in the opening match or they wrestle right before the main event and the winner just stays in the ring, you know, until the other two guys get out there. And I also think it's kind of cool how the WWE has changed it up. You know, after WrestleMania 28, you know, we got that year long build. You know, we knew the night after WrestleMania 27 what the WrestleMania 28 main event was going to be. Even leading up to WrestleMania 29, I think I talked about it in commentaries all during that year of 2012 saying, hey, you know, I bet next year at WrestleMania 29 we're going to see The Rock and John Cena again. So I think with the previous few WrestleManias having set in stone main events, one of those main events being, you know, advertised a full year in advance, it's nice to see the WWE go the other direction. You're not going to know until the show what the main event is going to be. There could also possibly be a really interesting pattern here forming every 10 WrestleManias. You think 20 years ago with Bret Hart, the way he won the title, the underdog, the best wrestler in the company, the most over guy at the time, you know, ended up getting the belt over a guy like Luger, who it looked like the WWE was going to push. But instead, the fans really weren't accepting the guy that the WWE was, at the time, forcing down our throats, much like John Cena. The fans didn't like it. They weren't having it. They were calling for Brett. WWE changed the plans and made Brett champion. And he won it in a similar fashion. WrestleMania 10, you didn't know what the main event was going to be either. The main event was either going to be Bret Hart versus Yokozuna or Bret Hart versus Lex Luger. You would not know what was going to happen until halfway through the show. And that's the way they're setting up WrestleMania 30 this year. And of course, WrestleMania 20, we all know how that show ended with Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit and the confetti and the celebration. I mean, that was such a great moment. Two good hard workers like that, two good wrestlers, you know, closing out the biggest show in the WWE's history as world champions. It was a beautiful moment. And here we are 10 years later after Chris and Eddie and 20 years later after Brett, and we could have the same situation take place with Daniel Bryan this year at WrestleMania 30. I think it's awesome. And if the main event at WrestleMania 30 did turn out to be a fatal four-way somehow, wouldn't it be ironic if Triple H tapped out to the crossface 
just like he did 10 years ago at WrestleMania 20. That would be pretty crazy and pretty eerie, and it would go back to what I've talked about before and predicted that the WWE has a chance to right a wrong from 10 years ago, you know, and recreate a moment that unfortunately they can never go back and enjoy because of the actions of Chris Benoit. So they can basically make another one. And that way, 10 years from now, when they want to look back at this, you know, provided Daniel Bryan doesn't kill his family and himself, this will be a moment that the WWE and its universe can enjoy for generations to come. I think it's got great potential, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for it so much. I'm just rooting for Daniel Bryan so hard. I think this will be so awesome. And I'm so anti-Triple H hating. I just think that's so fucking retarded. You know, I've just defended this guy till the end of the earth. I think if somebody has got to marry Stephanie, if somebody has to take over the company, you know, you got to think, Stephanie can't not get married, okay? She's got to marry somebody. She chose to marry a wrestler. You're just going to have to fucking deal with it. And he's just 24-7 pro wrestling. He always has been. To me, I don't know who else you would want. Who in the world would you prefer to be Vince McMahon's successor, if it has to be somebody and Stephanie has to marry somebody, you know, who else would you prefer that would make you happy to where you wouldn't complain and bitch about it? Oh, there goes Stephanie's husband again, putting himself over, hogging the spotlight, holding people down. The guy hasn't wrestled in a fucking year. How the hell is he holding people down? How is he hogging the spotlight? He's Triple H. He's been in the company forever. He can still wrestle. He earned his right to wrestle at WrestleMania if he wants once a year. Like him or not, Triple H was a huge part of of the success of your Attitude Era, the era that you desperately want back. Without DX, I don't know if that era would have been the same. Triple H and his crew were just as responsible for the success of the Attitude Era as the Rock and Stone Cold were. So all of a sudden, years later, just because the guy decides to get married, you hate him now? That's fucking retarded. He's a smart man, and I think he's doing wonders so far with his position in the WWE, and if there's going to be a guy that's going to take over, at least it's a guy with a love for the business. Without Triple H, you know, who knows what the tag team scene would look like right now. Without Triple H, Bruno San Martino wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. And I think he's going to do a really good job assuming the role of Vince McMahon behind the camera and on camera. Because if you think about it, Triple H is great. He's better than Vince McMahon. You know why? Because he can work. Because he's a wrestler. Imagine if Vince McMahon was a good wrestler and he got in the ring and had those matches with Stone Cold and all those other guys he feuded with when, uh, you know, when Vince was around. And Vince drew a lot of that hate from the crowd because of some of the behind the scenes sleazy things he would do because of the screw job with Bret Hart. You know, that Mr. McMahon evil character was sort of part of him and the fans really, it, it was easy to hate Vince McMahon. Triple H can assume that same role. He's got the same type of heat because fans have always been on his case for all those stupid reasons that I laid out earlier and now he's in a position of power. Now he flaunts his power. Now he's a heel. He's constantly berating, belittling, and quote-unquote burying the Smarks hero, Daniel Bryan. He's taking shots at the fans. He's insulting the fans. He's flaunting his power, and he's making out with the boss's daughter right in front of everybody. I love this Triple H character, and I absolutely love what he did to Daniel Bryan on Raw. And all of you haters out there, it's going to be really interesting to see how you're going to explain yourselves and how you're going to eat your words at WrestleMania when this piece of shit douchebag prick that married the boss's daughter is actually going to put somebody over again, like he has, I don't know how many times at WrestleMania. He tapped out at WrestleMania 20. He got pinned at WrestleMania 21. He tapped out at WrestleMania 22. He tapped out at WrestleMania 27. He got pinned at WrestleMania 28. And I don't know, did he lose at WrestleMania 24? I'm pretty sure he did. So don't sit there like an idiot and act like it's completely out of the question that Triple H will never put anybody over ever, 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 and he holds everybody back. Apparently you have no memory whatsoever. I did express some concern recently about the predictability of WrestleMania 30, you know, after the Occupy Raw segment. Well, now Daniel Bryan we can see him beating Triple H. We can see him going into the main event, you know, and winning the title and closing out the show. Yes, 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 new champion. But that almost seemed too easy, too predictable. And now the WWE has thrown another possible scenario in here, adding Triple H to the mix and now saying that the winner of Daniel Bryan and Triple H gets into the main event. So now either guy, you know, can go into the main event. And then also during the show, a lot can go down. I'm still curious how Triple H is going to just sit back and watch Daniel Bryan go into the main event after he loses to him. It just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like something Triple H would do, especially with all the power that he has. You know, you'd think he's going to use that power to try to fuck over Daniel Bryan and do everything he can to make sure 
you know, that Daniel Bryan does not win the title at WrestleMania. I mentioned in my last commentary that because of this huge uphill battle that Daniel Bryan has, and now that he's apparently going to be injured going into this huge uphill battle, he could use some help. The guy with the Pepsi tattoo was on some Talking Dead show or something like that over the weekend. He didn't utter a word about WWE, and he's being edited out of a lot of the WWE's video packages and shit, so it looks like he really is gone, but there is still the possibility that he could be just the guy that Daniel Bryan needs to help him, you know, combat these, you know, insurmountable odds. As far as what else happened on this week's Raw, you know, I don't know. The Triple H Daniel Bryan stuff was so good, I damn near forgot about everything else, but there was one other significant thing. It looks like the Shield might have officially turned face. And as a matter of fact, they literally turn face. They're staring at Jerry Lawler, and then the three of them just turn around and attack Kane. They turned face. Pretty fucking cool. You could see it coming a mile away, though, because Kane came out and starts uh, blaming Jerry Lawler for the Occupy Raw segment last week because, of course, Lawler is a Memphis legend, and they're claiming that he pulled some strings with the city and the security to allow Daniel Bryan to have the segment that he had. So Kane calls Jerry Lawler into the ring, calls the Shield down to the ring, and basically the Shield is supposed to beat the crap out of Jerry Lawler. Well, you knew that wasn't going to happen. I mean, Jerry Lawler just had a heart attack a year and a half ago, you know? He's not going to take a triple power bomb through a table. So instead, the Shield decide to attack Kane instead, beating the crap out of him, and it's just... It's just tragic what's become of Kane. You know, I think back of who Kane was, how he came in, you know, and the way I saw him on Monday night, just, you know, just terrible. I hope we get to see the big red machine again at least one more time before he retires. But I like the segment. It's nice to see the Shield still standing tall. You know, we thought we were going to have a match between those three guys at WrestleMania, but that looks like that's uh, definitely not going to happen now. They're not going to have time to have a split up and then a build up for some sort of a three way match at WrestleMania. These guys are going to stay together a little bit longer. And I don't think these guys have any plans yet for WrestleMania. I'm not sure if Dean Ambrose has a title defense lined up or anything like that. So I mentioned in my last commentary stick them in that battle royal. If they still do plan on eventually breaking up the Shield, they just want to hold it off a little bit longer, then put them in the battle. Royal at WrestleMania and have him be the last three guys. I would love to see Roman Reigns standing there holding that Andre the Giant trophy. He'd be the perfect guy to put over in something like that. They're trying to build him anyway. You know he's going to be a huge star, you know, just a monstrous sized star in the future, and the fans really like him. You know, to me, that could be an easy route for them to go with the Shield, you know, at WrestleMania. Also, from the looks of things, I'm almost positive the real Americans are probably just going to have a one on one match at WrestleMania. They are still having problems. They actually scored a victory, you know, over the tag team champions as much as I would like to see the real Americans as tag team champions I would only like to see that if they were a cohesive team I thought the real Americans were a real good team but now they've been teasing the split for so long it seems inevitable you know those two guys have got no business holding the tag team titles please leave them on the Usos but they had a couple of more segments on Raw where they were arguing with each other. Jack Swagger sent Zeb and Cesaro all the way on the other side of the building for the interview, you know, and then started the interview without him. And then they're in the ring and they had a few more, you know, little bickering moments in the ring. And it looks like Zeb is constantly having to get these guys to shake hands and have to give some big speech to get them to, you know, fall back in line. So what I eventually see happening is Zeb just getting fed up and saying, fuck this shit. I can't take it anymore. You two are driving me so fucking crazy. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to wrestle each other at WrestleMania and settle your differences in the ring and then hopefully at Wrestlemania Cesaro beats the ever-loving piss out of Jack Swagger and the one other noteworthy thing about Raw is that just as I predicted just in the nick of time Mr. T is coming into the Hall of Fame after all that is great news I'm very happy about that he needs to be in this year with the celebrity wing you know the way it is Mr. T is the Bruno San Martino of the celebrity wing. Without Mr. T, it has no credibility whatsoever. I mean, Mr. T was the first guy. Without him, I mean, you guys, a lot of you listening to this weren't alive in 1985, but I was, and I remember the popularity of the A-Team. That shit was huge. I think even during Mr. T's video package, somebody said, you know, you didn't even need Muhammad Ali. You didn't need Liberace. You didn't need Billy Martin. You didn't need any of those guys at WrestleMania 1. Mr. T was the big celebrity there. And that is a very interesting you know hall of fame class we have this year i mean there is going to be some outrageous personalities on that stage you think of jake the snake roberts the ultimate warrior mr t you know holy shit and as predicted i do think that explains a lot why linda mcmahon will be inducting the ultimate warrior because you have to know that hulk hogan has to induct mr t there can't be anybody else to induct mr t other than hulk hogan the only other guy i can think of that could possibly induct him would be roddy piper but i don't think roddy piper has ever liked him and still doesn't like him
And I really hope the rumors are true about Scott Hall. To me, that would be the icing on the cake of a great Hall of Fame class this year. Jake is already going in. DDP is already inducting him. Bring that whole fucking house along. They've all worked really hard to get where they are. Jake and Scott Hall have really, you know, done well to clean up, you know, what's left of their lives. And DDP has been a big part of that. You know, and I think all those guys there together, experiencing that Hall of Fame together, could do wonders for, you know, their lives and the fans. But anyway, that's it. I have got to get out of here. I might be up here in a couple of days. I might do a midweek or a weekend commentary this week. I'm just not sure. It depends on uh, if any wrestling news breaks or if we hear about any more big news about WrestleMania 30 or anything like that. I will be back up here. Otherwise, at the very latest, It'll be next Tuesday after Raw again. So let me know what you think about WrestleMania 30. Don't forget to sub, friend, and follow all of my pages, and I will catch you in a few days. Peace.